Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Bogey Proof. We have the entire Bogey Proof staff here today. We got Matt, Eric, Joey, and myself, Mike. Excited to chat a little golf and, and coming up here on the floor to swing on the PGA Tour. Mr. Fontaine, where are you dialing in from and what are you sipping on tonight? Yeah, we're, uh, we're in Connecticut for a couple more days here before uh, a little Florida swing of my own. Um, and I'm sipping on a little Four Roses tonight. Try to mix it up or finish that Jefferson small batch and went down and grabbed another bottle. Matt, which, uh, which Four Roses you got there? Be a little more specific. Small batch. Small batch. There you go. Good choice. Four Roses small batch yep. is a great choice. I think that's the one that we had in New Hampshire, right? Or it, I don't know. That's it what I thought exactly it was. the one we had in New Hampshire. Yeah, all right. Mm-hmm. I was trying to get on that that wavelength, get those vibes back again pre-golf <laughs> yeah. trip here. Uh, Take- but yeah, glad I glad I picked correctly. I just remembered four rows, and I was like, it didn't look like those other bottles. I think it was this one. <laughs> <laughs> Taste four roses, small batch. Tastes like uh, Chris Stapleton's voice. That's all. That's why I'm how I'm going to describe it. Just good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Eric, what are you sipping on tonight? I have got a uh, red wine. It's um, Zio Baffa Toscana. It's um, o- <laughs> organic Italian red wine. Um, I have had the bottle sitting on my shelf for like three months and finally decided to open it up. Didn't really know what to expect. And it's pretty decent. Joey? What goes on with organic wine? How do you have non-organic so, wine? Isn't it all just grapes? Yeah, so essentially what, organic what, wine is the, the grapes are organically farmed. No chemicals, none right. of that bullshit. Huh. It's all grapes. It's fine. It's all grapes. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, what do you got going over there? Um, I'm, I'm selling the seltzer train, boys. Um, this, this is a local, not even local, but Florida. It doesn't, Libations Hard Seltzer, Blackberry Orchid. They're quite delicious. They had some interesting flavors. Um I'm all aboard the seltzer train, man. It's just, they're, they're just so refreshing. Uh, can't complain about them. Michael, we might, like you, man. We might have to make a t-shirt that just says quite delicious. Across <laughs> <laughs> I think every single seltzer review, it's been quite, quite delicious. delicious. <laughs> yeah, we no, I think we need to like. They're coming out with three more flavors. Wait till those release. I'm true. That's going to be next week. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to have like a train on the front with a little seltzer and then the back, it's just going to say quite delicious. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard the seltzer train. Love it. Yes, I love it. I got a, I got a little Texas Ranger, Texas blended whiskey here. Oh, um, wow. Coming, coming to you guys from uh, the bird cage here in San Antonio. Uh, the bird man's bedroom. It's in the, it's in the corner of the house, the quietest spot. And, uh, the other, the other guys in the house are making some dinner and, and running around. So found a nice little quiet spot to do the podcast here this week, but super tasty. It's kind of got like notes of vanilla and caramel in it. So I, I don't know if this is kind of a normal, I think it's just because it's a blended whiskey. There's probably a few different things and, and kind of those notes are, are coming to me first, but very nice, nice little after dinner drink, just because it's a little bit sweet, I would say. Um, not i mean maybe a little bit bourbony honestly at times like i think you can get a bourbon that's got a little bit of vanilla and caramel to it as well but uh yeah nice little texas whiskey for you guys yeah it sounds good <laughs> yeah sounds like no, a good irish coffee a little mixer go ahead and some coffee in the morning sounds, mm, sounds mr tasty. mr fontaine i think if if we end up getting the the pontoon boat that we were chatting about for when you get into town yeah. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll, we'll bring this bottle up. Maybe we'll get another bottle and bring it out there in the morning with a, you know, a box of Joe from Dunkin' Donuts. Could be dangerous. Could be dangerous. <laughs> Matt, just, just for future reference for it to be Irish, uh, Irish coffee, it's gotta be Irish whiskey, not Texas whiskey. Nah, you know what I was saying. You know it's, hey, it's, hey, it's a Texas tea. We'll put tea in it. There you Texas go. tea. There you go. There you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll, we'll have, I'll, you know what I'll do? I'll get some sweet tea and then we'll, and then we'll put this in there. The text. I love it. Even better options, <laughs> but yeah, a couple of interesting things going on here on the, on the PJ tour fun week of golf that we, that we all watched uh, last week. But I think something that just kind of came across our, our screens here in the last day or so was this Amazon web services and, and PGA tour kind of entering into contract negotiations and a, and a few other things going on. Matt, could you kind of just give us a little insight on what's going on there? You know, I know there's not too many details that have really flowed through that far, but kind of, you know, what are they going to provide and and how is that going to change kind of viewer experience? Yeah, I think, you know, like you said, nothing total, like no formal plan has been leaked yet that I'm aware of, but 
partnering with Amazon, especially like web services, is basically like a cloud system. And it just gives them so many options with more data, more just resources in general to hopefully improve like, you know, PGA Tour Live is pretty good, but now you could have PGA Tour Live for more than just six players at a time, right? Like more better coverage of like the, especially Thursday, Friday rounds when there's not a lot of and early weekends, whatever it may be, um, as well as being able to go back and get all the, you know, historic rounds, right? Like you want to watch the 2008 Bay Hill tournament. Like I think the, through this Amazon Web Services thing, that'll now become available to whether it's on YouTube or your Amazon Prime account, however it gets there. I think just working with Amazon, they just opened up a whole lot of options for content, um, both of live events and past events of just like the resources that Amazon Web Services provides and like the data that they're used to working with and just how Amazon operates, honestly, like they're just, they're just above and beyond what, especially what the PGA tour has been with their content that they're putting out. So I'm excited to see kind of what this brings. I don't know how soon we'll see the impacts of it, but um, definitely exciting news. I think it's going to hopefully lead to a lot of more golf content to consume, right? I just better, a better viewing experience and, you know, a lot more other things to come with that. I think hopefully we'll see. Yeah. I mean, like, like, like you said, more golf content to consume and a lot of the stuff that we've talked about specifically over the last couple of weeks with like Rory's comments on the whole distance report and stuff like grow the game. Right. And obviously social media is, is huge right now across every sport and golf of, of all sports in the world has unlimited content. Right. Players are on the golf course for, for 12 hours a day and the the more recording and, and video kind of database that can be built around the PGA tour, the better. Cause I mean, if you want to grow the game and, and put stuff out on social media and, and give uh-huh. people more access to watch golf whenever they want yeah. is, is, is growing the game. And I think that's, it's, it's a great step in the right direction for the PGA tour. And um, I'm excited to see the details of, of yeah. what the new deal brings. Yeah, there's rumors of like now being able to go back and watch old rounds and have it be like a speed round version because having all that data out there, they're able to just, it doesn't, there's not somebody from the PGA Tour that has to go through and edit that now. Now Amazon Web Services has people and, you know, I'm sure they have like algorithm, you know, whatever. They got a ton of technology and stuff to do that where you can now go watch a final round and by from one player and, you know, you just watch all 72 shots or whatever, like an hour versus the five hour telecast, right? Like you can just like, consume it and i think that's the way they like grow the game right it's always golf's like kind of slow and blah 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 like whatever like for us golf junkies like we kind of love that aspect of it because we get to hear conversations with caddies or you know watch them think their way around a golf course but for people that may not be interested in golf yet and they see oh golf's on for seven hours on saturday like that's a lot that's a big commitment for me you know like this gives them a different angle to maybe get interested in it and then feed into other stuff so I think kind of like you said, it's a, it's a good step forward and kind of growing the game versus, you know, what we've seen the past couple of years with all this distance nonsense. I just want to point out one quote that they say is they are, they, the fans are promised to have a video game like control of the golf viewing experience. Like, it's a big promise. Is, what, that is does that, what does that even mean? I don't know, but that's Joey. Sounds, Joey, I think, right. I think it's, it's maybe along the lines of, Hey, we're watching the fi- the final group is is coming up on the sixth hole. What are the stats that go on to the sixth hole? Historically, you know, how many people have hit it in the water? What's the average score? Like I think we're just gonna have some we're gonna have access yeah. to a different level of data and you know, kind of like Matt was saying, kind of past videos or kind of past rounds. But I think Matt, you brought up another point too that I think is really interesting, right? You talk about maybe being able to condense condense the round into 45 minutes or an hour, right? Like some people, not everyone has that time or say they're getting into the game of golf and, Hey, I don't really have the time. Like I want to be out on the golf course practicing or I have a family or or whatever the case be, but right. If I can watch around while I'm sipping on my coffee, I, you know, at seven to seven 30 and learn something about the golf course before I, you know, I think like anything, everyone wants to be kind of part of the group as well. And, and say you're kind of the, the person that's most behind when it comes to understanding the game of golf in your friend group. Hey, now we go and we can learn more about the game. We can learn more about the course. We kind of know it's almost like 
the generic social media. Hey, I don't know what's going on. Let me check social media and kind of catch myself up. And now I'm part of the crowd. Now I kind of, you know, can be involved in the discussions and the experiences that go into that. So uh, I, I think it's awesome. It's going to open up. I think players are going to use it right mm-hmm. now that if we have all this additional data that's going into think about, I mean, yeah, I know people on the PGA tour can get to data and, you know, where's the best miss and all that kind of stuff. But if you have a, you know, data that's supported by a data lake from Amazon services, you know, that's an ex- extreme amount of data they haven't been dealing with before, right? Probably just going to improve the overall way that players go around the golf course as well. Probably a, lot of it kind of, a lot of it kind of reminds me of, uh, of what the Masters did this past fall with their yeah. online, online viewing platform. And like Mike, you said, kind of like that, or Joe, you said the, the video game experience. I remember the the masters online platform this past fall you could pretty much bounce around on any hole and oh this group is on is on the eighth hole let's go let's go watch them live um so yeah definitely excited to see what what this brings yeah no it's pretty awesome uh i would say let's get into a little quick recap of wgc played a concession this week i think it just comes down to colin morikawa (laughs) kids kids a stud number four in the number four in the world now just the way he picks apart a golf course, the way he sticks to his golf swing and his shot shape. And right. He pulled out the claw this week and a new putter. And next thing you know, he's winning a BJ tour event, um, four wins in his first 41 starts, uh, two years on tour here. So, you know, a major, a WGC and, and two other wins on, uh, you know, he went at Barracuda, but the other three places with, you know, three big time golf courses, you know, I, I would expect him to to continue at the top and and be one of those those people that we look forward to in, in majors, you know, move, moving forward. Fontaine, what was kind of your thoughts on on him this weekend and, and maybe a couple other things that happened, you know, the Tiger Tribune and, and kind of some of the followers and, and people that were contending at the towards the end of the weekend? Yeah, I think, uh, like you said, Colin Morikawa, man, golf, like he can just play. It's crazy. It's he does it in a way that's not that popular right now. I feel like it's not the bomb and gouge or he's not hit. He doesn't carry it three thirty like, you know, DJ Rory bright, you know, any of those guys, but his iron play is, and I think we've mentioned it before on this podcast, but his iron play is like next level elite. Like I think that's part of why his putting stats kind of have always been a little sketchy. It's because he's got, you know, between 10 and 20 feet on every single hole. It doesn't matter what club he's hitting in. It's his, you know, five yard cut straight in the air all over it every time. He, you never see him. I mean, obviously this week he won, so I don't think he hit many bad iron shots, but it seems like every time I'm watching him hit an iron shot, it's it's this five yard cut high in the air, soft, lands like, if anything, he just, it, he lands it whole high and it rolls up 15 feet past or he's a little short, you know, like it's never like off the world or any doubt. It's almost always right at his target and it's just, really impressive to just watch him do it in kind of a different way than what's like, you know, the hot, you know, the new trend right now and how people seem to be winning golf tournaments. He just kind of, I mean, he hits his driver solid, right? Like go to back to the PGA when he hit the, he hit a driver to 10 feet from 310 yards or whatever on that 16th hole or whatever it was. So it's not like he hits, it's not like he, you know, can't hit a driver. It's just, he's not this bomber by any means. And his iron play is just so far advanced that, if he just has a decent week on the greens, he's right there. Right. And I think it's, it's also refreshing to see, like I said, he's, he's young. He's won uh, what four in his four, first 41 starts or whatever it is. Like that's incredibly quick. I think John Rahm's the only guy recently that's been that quick and John Rahm didn't do it with majors or WGCs. Um, he won a Tory, but other than that, I don't think they were the biggest like marquee events for four in this his first four and 38, but um I don't know. Colin Morikawa just seems like he's so polished and like his post round interview, like, you know, saying thank you to Tiger. He's like, you know, I, he's like, um, he's 23, four. I don't even know. Four, four. He's super young and he's just like, seems very well spoken and like goes about it the right way. And like, just very transparent, like authentic. I just think it's, it's really fun to watch. Like it's impossible to root against him, Right. He's just, it seems like an awesome guy. And the way he plays golf is incredibly impressive. It's like envious. I can't imagine hitting irons as good as that. It's just so – it's incredible to watch. And uh, like you said, that Tiger tribute on Sunday was pretty cool. I mean, kind of hate how social media just has to make everything so extreme of you have to be one way or the other. Like some guys like 
like Colin didn't have a red shirt on on Sunday and he's like I tried to get one and just you know it's not like they can go in the 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 um pro shop at these places and just pick one out like they all have so many logos on their shirts that we may not realize are there but they get paid a lot of money to make sure they wear a shirt with those logos on it so it's not like they can just go grab one off the rack and throw a red shirt on for the Nike guys obviously they can do that but for a lot of the other guys that are sponsored by different um you know, whether it's foot joy, Taylor may, whatever, there's, there's a little more hoops to jump through to be able to just change their scripting for the week. So I thought it was really cool on Sunday to see the players that were able to do it, kind of do something like that. That was, I don't know. I, I love tiger, obviously. So I love seeing stuff like that in support of him. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, Joey, what do you think about, you know, WGC? I know you didn't get to watch a ton of it, but based yeah, on, you no. know, checking out and stuff. Obviously love, you know, love what the guy, all the players were doing what they could for, you know, just kind of show their support for Tiger and, you know, and obviously I wasn't on the episode last week, so I, it was terrible to see what happened, but we're not going to talk about that anyway. It's, it's done in its past and we're just hoping for the best for him, right? And it's all we really can do. Um, I, you know, I'm tempted to kind of go back and, you know, just watch a final round because I was, you know, like I was saying to you guys earlier, it's I've just heard people talking about that golf course and saying it might be, you know, just things I've seen on Twitter. Everyone was saying it might be one of the harder courses that they've seen the guys play on tour. And, you know, I'd be interested to just kind of see why they were saying that exactly and just kind of see how it was set up. But, you know, other than that, I like I said, I, I, I didn't get to watch any of it, unfortunately. So I, I don't have much for you guys this week, but uh, looking forward to the invitational coming up this weekend, I will say. And that's, that's, that's all I have on this, you know, this past weekend's tournament. Um, Calm work out, like we were saying, absolute stud. Um, what, what putter was he even using? I, I haven't even, been, I'm just curious. Do you guys know? It wasn't that good looking. I don't know. It was a weird looking. It was thing. an odyssey. It was an odyssey kind of rounded mallet. Was it an odyssey? Or Taylor yeah. made. Taylor, Taylor made. Excuse right? me. Taylor made. Sorry. Okay. It's, Taylor made. It was kind of a rounded mallet, but. I, looking? I think I know which one it is now. But he was using the claw grip, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, whatever works. I don't think. I think it's for him if he just had like. Reminds me very much. I mean, totally different way it's done, but like rory-esque like back five ten years ago when he was winning majors and wgc's and stuff like that if you just had a decent week on the greens he was in the top five you know because he hits the shit out of the ball i think colin does it more with the approach game versus the t-ball but it's very similar where if they just put like middle of the pack for the week they're they're in the top 10 right it's just it's uh it's i mean obviously like that gifted striking a golf ball yeah, and I mean, obviously, like we've said, I mean, he's so young. He's 24, whatever, however old he is. I mean, your putting can get better as well. So, I mean, right. it's, it's it's only time, you know. I mean, I'm sure he's going to put the work in, in, you know, years to come. So, Joe, obviously. right, your, your, your putting has is, is peaked at 25, right? You struggled at 24 <laughs> and you peaked at 25? Fuck, man, yesterday was one of the best putting days I've had in a long time. I, mean, I think I may have peaked at 26. It's uh, 26. It's all right. Um, yeah, but no, exactly. I mean, always room for improvement, and he's definitely going to get there. I, I just want to call out um, Scotty Scheffler's shirt. I know it was probably <laughs> last minute for him to get that red shirt. Big boy. <laughs> but was he – was that a tribute to, like, 97 Tiger with yeah. the with the big t- with the big shirt? Yeah. Or did they just give him a triple X? Like, I – I don't know. He wears bigger shirts usually, though. He does wear, like, a little looser no, shirt. He's definitely not a form-fitting guy, but he was swimming in that one. He was swimming on something. I wish I saw it. <laughs> oh, no, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, I, that, was, that, was a t- that was a that was a tough one. Yeah, it was like a late get him a couple 2000s seasons. fit polo. <laughs> and then yeah, to go along that, with it, it was that Nike polo that had just had the rogue lines all over it. So. <laughs> bad shirt. <laughs> bad shirt <laughs> nike 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 is really just pushing it this year for <laughs> going back to the masters till now they seem to just keep throwing out every i don't know every three four tournaments they just throw it out and you're like oh my god like what is that like, yeah <laughs> but they can do it because they're nike and people are gonna buy it because they saw rory mcelroy wear it and sky scheffler look like an idiot in it and whatever but people yeah. are gonna buy them you'll be surprised i bet you we see a couple down in florida <laughs> oh god 
I love the uh, I love Fina walking in with his hat backwards and everything <laughs> like that too. I mean, it was just it was perfect. Yeah, I love I love how him and Tommy they had the mocks on too. Like they weren't just yeah. throwing them down. it was the mock. I was like, fuck yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Uh, I watched most of the most of the final round on Sunday, at least once the leaders teed off. And one thing that I kind of took away from it, it was Billy Horschel is fun to watch. He, he's nuts. He's nuts. He lives is, and dies on every swing. Man. Yeah, exactly. He is. He puts 100 million <laughs> percent of his energy into every single shot. And it is so much fun to watch. Um it's He's a guy that I've match. kind of liked him for for a long time. I just I don't I don't know I don't really have a specific reason why. He maybe because he pretty well. Yeah, maybe maybe because he's one of the best dressed players on tour. But um, yeah, it was fun to to be able to watch most of his shots there in the final round. Because yeah, he talk about someone grinding. I mean, he yeah. he was must be mentally exhausted after every oh single God, yeah. round of golf he plays. Yeah, dude, watching him like I agree it's fun to watch, but it's fun to watch the coverage version because when they show him on the first tee where they show his whole routine, I'm like, holy shit, dude! Like, it's <laughs> it's honestly, stressful. it's like, it's like it's Kevin Bradley, Na, Kevin Na, it's like it's, it's like combined. Kevin, it's like Kevin Na before he learned to smile. Yeah, type mix of, in, yeah. mix in a little more bit intensity, of, mix in a little bit of Keegan Bradley too. Yeah, with the fidgetiness, right with his yeah. forearms, all that stuff, <laughs> like. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm pro Billy Ho. And I think I love, I love that like emotion, but if I was in his group and I had to watch him do that every single shot, I would lose my mind. <laughs> Granted, like the coverage that they, they, they do them right with the coverage and they just go to him once he gets past all that shit for the most part. But when they announce his name on the first tee and they showed that whole routine, I was like, Whoa, I was the, like, the, stag- the staggered feet on the putting stroke too. Yeah. yeah. Staggered it's- feet on the putting stroke. And he does like left hand low, like, big forward press and like wicked high hands too there's a lot that there's a lot going on in that guy's head man but i mean hey credit to him big boy golf course he showed up and i mean he he grinded pretty well seems like all day sunday every time i was i caught him making a swing it was out of a fairway bunker and he still (laughs) i think he still got like two or three under he still had a pretty good day on that golf course so yeah i think he's a yeah i think he's a sleeper for the next He's a sleeper for the entire Florida swing. I think he's playing really well right now. He's Florida hometown Gator. Florida guy, and uh, obviously, we probably will be comfortable at most of those courses. So, I think he's a sleeper these yeah. next few weeks. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. I think someone who's who played well and was there this weekend too. Brooks Brooks has showed up, and it's it's probably I, I think it's it's probably we can say that his game is back. You know, he's uh, he's figured it out. He seems yeah. to be hurting a little bit. He's made he's made quite a few comments about um, his neck was super stiff this week and a couple other kind of lingering injuries. So I think really with the way he's playing right now, if he can just stay healthy down the stretch, we he's got it. He's got to be a favorite at the PGA in May. Um, the way he controls his golf ball in the wind, um, you know, coming coming to Kiwa in May, he's got to be a favorite. He's got to be a favorite at the players coming up here. I don't know if he's playing. Uh, uh, Arnold Palmer Invitational, but uh, you. you know, he got it. Got to be a favorite in, in pretty much every single time he he tees it up with the way he's kind of trending right now. Figuring out how to make yeah. birdies, and he just doesn't miss putts. Like if he if I there is say, a he makes every par putt he looks at. He always like I walk. He was a feature group Thursday Friday, and every time he didn't hit it that well on Thursday, I think because Friday was in the lead, so he played a good Friday, but. Thursday, he kind of scraped it around the first few holes, but all of a sudden, you know, 12 feet for par, dead center, never a doubt. Like, he he does that shit, kind of guts it out, like, seems to be better than most people on tour. Like, he's just – like you said, he's trending in the right direction. It seems like he's got his, like, swagger back, whatever you want to call it with him. Um, but definitely uh, towards the top of the list for major favorites now, just based on the way he plays in big big events. Yeah, no, no, for sure. I would agree. Um, I think let's let's kind of move into, you know, concession was played in Bradenton and eight Arnold Palmer's being played in Orlando. And I know Matt and Eric are headed their way to, to Orlando this week. Eric, when do you guys get down there and, and kind of, you know, wh- what's kind of maybe one golf course or or one day you're kind of you're looking forward to down there? 
Yeah, so uh, we were all traveling Thursday morning. So it's a total total of 12 of us that are that are making this trip down. Um, so we all fly down Thursday morning from from various airports and um, I'll get in a, between 9 and 10 a.m. on Thursday and first round of golf is two hours later right around noon. Um, so like we've mentioned in the past couple episodes, we've got six rounds of golf in five days. Um, we're there Thursday to Monday. Um, should be a, a, a fun trip. A lot of, a lot of different games going on throughout the week, as far as matches and side bets and, and God knows what else there's a, there's an Excel spreadsheet floating around out there that has so many different colors on it and like three different <laughs> sheets. And I mean, in our group message, like I'm just talking about like, what the hell does half of this mean? Uh, <laughs> so no, it's, it's exciting. Obviously, uh, any golf trip is fun in this one. Um, a lot is, is planned out ahead of time as far as matches and, and courses and what tees we're playing from. Everything is planned out ahead of time. So it's fun to kind of look forward to some of those things. I would say of a um, couple things I'm looking forward to the most. Um, so Friday, our round is at uh, this place called Bella Kalina in Orlando. Sure. It sure. is, uh, yeah, it seems like a pretty awesome golf course. It's got, um, it's kind of like built on a hill in Florida, which is obviously pretty hard to find. Um, so some some cool undulation to the golf course is a Nick Faldo design tipped out. It's like 7,500 yards. We're not going to be playing it anywhere close to that, but um, it seems like a pretty fun golf course. And the whole club itself has kind of got this like Tuscan Italy feel to it. Um, hence the name Bella Colina, but I would say that's probably the golf course that I'm most looking forward to. Um, the specific round and specific, specific pairing that I'm most looking forward to is the following day, Saturday morning, um, 740 AM. And also looks like it might be in the rain will be Matt Fontaine and friend of the program, Paul Murphy facing off against myself and Gary Fontaine. Oh my goodness. <laughs> PGA Tour live, yeah, PGA Tour live coverage. Yeah, so Needed. there's going to be a lot no of, <laughs> lot of Instagram live happening that day. Um, I think our plan is to each night on the trip, we're going to go live on Instagram from the Bogey Proof Instagram for 10, 15 minutes or so. Do a little, do a little daily recap and then a little preview of the next day as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be a fun week, and it's, it'll be it'll be good to be playing some golf and good to be back in some warm weather. Um, I don't think any of us have played any of the courses that we're, that we're going to play. So it'll be, uh, it'll be fun. I think we're all looking forward to it. I mean, I set my, I set my away message on my work email on Monday. Um, and we're not leaving for another two days here. So, um, <laughs> safe to say I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I cannot wait. It's going to be a blast. Like you said, this spreadsheet is ridiculous. My dad's retired now, so he's got far too much time on his hands. And I think he's been working on this since the day after he retired. <laughs> so definitely you had this uh, this trip circled on the calendar for a while now. But yeah, I think, like I said, the, the course, my, my dad's been going on this trip since I think college days, to be honest, um, with his buddy. So it's, it's a longstanding trip that, you know, I finally, you know, got myself financially stable enough to be able to afford my own way here. So finally going on this trip with them, looking forward to Bell Kalina. They always talk about, I think that's a good, good call, Eric, with like the golf course. Um, that Saturday morning match is going to be a battle in the rain. Can't wait for that. Uh, I'm just looking forward, honestly, to like celebration, usually a good one that they talk about a lot too. And that's going to be like our final day where your groups are based on your individual position for the week. So like the final group going okay. out, it's like one through four in the money list going into that day. So it's going to be pretty intense in that final group. I'm hoping that that round at celebration means something to me and I'm not playing for, you know, seventh place with, uh, with all these guys, but a lot of action, like Eric said, I mean, there's an individual thing for the whole week that's going on round by round, like you against your quota. There's every day there's either a uh, like inner match, like two on two, or there's like a threesome, like best three balls or whatever, or foursomes. Like every single day, there's like at least two different ways of action going on. So it's going to be a fun time. A lot of golf to be played. And a lot of uh, a lot of Instagram live content coming from myself and Eric through that bogey proof gram of, you know, I think we play together at least twice, maybe three times, but all depends yeah, on think, that last. I think Matt, I think you and I play together at least twice. Paul and I play with each other three times in a row. Beautiful. Rounds three, four and five. Paul and I are 
are in the same group there. But um, one one little side note, and who knows how many people uh, people going on this trip end up listening to any bogey proof episodes in the future. But um, the the one round that is is a foursomes game. Um, the format is best three net scores within your foursome. The one round that is that format is the round that I just mentioned on Saturday morning where our foursome team is going to be me, Matt, Paul, and Mr. Fontaine. Um, I don't know if your dad might get a little bit of shit for that being, uh, that being <laughs> his team for, for the foursomes game. I don't know. Uh, Three net, three net though doesn't do us a lot of good because me and you don't get shit. So that's true. <laughs> we don't get any strokes. So three net, I think, is his defense for that. Yeah. Because our com- our combined handicaps between me, you, Paul, and my dad is going to be like ten, and there anybody else, I think they're going to be at least twelve or thirteen. That's true. With the combined handicaps, so I agree. That's definitely a a bold strategy, but. My dad's been going on the trip for 25 years. He kind of makes the rules. He puts all this together, so he gets to pick his <laughs> on team. Did you guys? Did you say you're playing Celebration Golf Club? Yep. I my uh, buddy of mine that I used to work with. He really likes that course. I've always wanted to play yeah. there because of that. Our, our, I'll give you the full rundown here. So we got Hawks <laughs> Landing first day. I don't know what that is. Uh, Bella Clean Friday. Grand Cypress uh, new course. I don't know. That's the Saturday morning one. Champions Gate, which I think is like the where we stay, like it's where our like house is or whatever. So it's like right on like our property or whatever. Um, and then Waldorf Astoria, and then Celebrations the last day. Honestly, Waldorf. I've never played I've any never of them. That That's why I like to hear. I like the, I like that our Florida guys heard of these. That's usually a good sign. So yeah, I'm looking I forward. Did- I've heard of Waldorf, and I've heard of obviously Celebration, so I'm I'm excited to hear how those two are. I might try to hit Celebration on my way up, and you know, play it with my buddy if he's available or not. I, mean, I wish you guys could go play Celebration or not Celebration Park, um, Winter Park, but I know you guys don't have any time, so yeah, I no, we're pretty golf. Did I golf would suggest? Yeah, exactly. You're golfing enough anyway, so. It's a good one though. I'm gonna be in a lot of pain. I'm gonna need a lot of Advil. Yeah, I got um, <laughs> I got my oh no, it's over there. I can't reach it, but I went went to the grocery store to do a little uh little preparation to to make sure the body is in a good spot for the for this trip. I bought a uh, a 24 pack of liquid IVs, um, <laughs> a jar of BioFreeze um, for for the muscles, specifically the lower back, um, some ibuprofen. Um, some band-aids. Uh, um, oh, and, and I got some socks. I'm gonna need a lot of gonna need a lot of socks on this trip too. Speaking speaking yeah. of band-aids. Speaking of band-aids, so I we I've been down in Texas for ten days or so now. We've gone to the range quite a few times, and I played Friday through Sunday, and two of the guys in the house played Wednesday through Sunday. You know, clearly working a lot uh, as as they're down here, <laughs> and their hands, like all of them, are golfers but they're newer golfers i would say you know all picked up the game within the last few years and you know if they get out for 10 or 15 rounds a year is that that that's probably pretty good their hands after like two or three rain sessions absolutely murdered the bird the bird man had blood rush rushing down his hand today at the at the range so like (laughs) and and my hands i think i've got to the point i haven't had a blister in probably it's probably been four years since i've had a blister yeah just because playing so much golf um like i i just think my hands are so calloused over at this point but good call on the band-aids like yeah you you know hopefully it's going to take you a handful of rounds to get a blister but at some point you're probably going to get one whether it be on your foot or your feet and it's going to be much needed yeah especially i mean we're i think like every course we're going to has a range and like our place that we stay at like that that champion skate or whatever i think we get access to that range if we want it we play enough golf. I'm not going to be going to the range on top of hit playing every day, but it's out there where we're probably going to be hitting balls before all of our rounds too. So I absolutely will be band-aiding up yeah. at least my hands, probably my feet too. Got new shoes. I wore them around the apartment the other day, break them in a little bit, just mm-hmm. walking around while I'm working, just try and mix, just, you know, try and give them like a half aware before I try and play, you know, like a double round in them or something, but we'll see. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I'm excited to, 
to hear kind of a couple stories from you guys and you know and, and be part of the content i will i will definitely be consuming bogey proof content this week with you guys on instagram live and um living through you guys hopefully we're going to play a couple rounds here and here in san antonio i think we got a a little day trip plan to Austin. So probably not going to play on Saturday. So maybe only one or two rounds this week. Um, so going to be living vicariously through you guys playing, doing your little golf trip. Um, but I, I, you know, outside of WGC this week, Puerto Rico, not too much to say, you know, Brandon Grace got it done. Great finish, knocking it in for two on 17 out of the bunker and then getting it up and down on 18 for another birdie to win. Joey, close call with your pick with Johnny Vegas. Um, <laughs> we played really well. Just tough to tough to see him. Yeah, yeah, you know, just tough for that to that's kind of happen and and Brandon Grace to get it done. LPGA <laughs> Tour, Nelly Corda got it done um, at Lake Nona, I believe. Lake Nona, Ironworth. I'm trying to remember where they played that this Nona. week. Lake Nona. Nona. Um, just a tremendous golf swing and. You know, another young talent on the LPGA tour that it's going to win a major at some point. She's, I think she's had some injuries the last year or two um, that have kind of hindered her from really, you know, getting on a roll and winning a handful of tournaments. And, but, you know, I think she's really only, she's like 21, 22 years old. So expect her to, you know, be in the thick of it majors this year and, and moving forward. Uh, and, and also a couple of good names. Lydia Ko had the lead um, at, at one point and, and a couple other, you know, kind of superstars, I would say, in the LPJ tour were making some hay. So a lot of fun. Yeah, the goat was out there too. Annika was out there making the cut. Yeah, wild. How crazy is that? In 13 years, and then she goes out there and just makes the cut. Just kind of reasserts just how freaking good she is, right? I mean, <laughs> she would dominate the LPJ coming tour out for however many What did you say, Joe? I don't know actually what caused it. Yeah. I don't she, really know. She's a resident. She's a resident of Lake Nona. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, her, her house is like oh, on her house is like on the thirteenth tee box or something. Do, well, you, do you think? Do you think she just talk. like shot sixty four like a couple weeks before and was like, eh, I think Probably. I should play. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. That place Probably. gets that place gets a lot of players. I think Stenson's also Henrik yeah. Stenson's a resident of of Lake Nona as well. I'm pretty sure on like Saturday or Sunday, Stamp's son had to leave the tournament early. He was watching her had to leave the tournament early to go to like Stenson's daughter's birthday party or something. Um, Swedish connection there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, no, that was fun to watch. I also got to shout out Mike Weir um, threw up, on, <laughs> threw, threw up on himself down the stretch, bogeyed, bogeyed 16 and 18 um, to lose by two. Revenge uh, Kevin forward. Sunderland got it done, but got, I, a lot of, a lot of, a lot, lot of hate for Mike Weir on the, on the podcast as of late, a lot of slander, but until he gets it done on Sunday, we're keeping, we're going to keep coming with it. So <laughs> Joey, what did, what'd you have to say? My man. I was, just, I was curious how Phil ended up playing. I'm looking up. Uh, now. He finished 20. I think he finished 20th. He was four under. Yeah. So Damn. didn't, didn't win his first three champion store starts. It would have been uh, a record. I, I was hoping right? he did. That would have been awesome. Yeah, probably just didn't have enough coffee or something. It doesn't good. matter what level you're at. You have to hit at least like three fairways to be able to, <laughs> yeah. to, be able to win. And he hits the ball. He's hitting it hard now. He got it. He got his speed he wanted. But my goodness, he has no clue where that golf ball is going with the driver. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like me at the moment. But, yeah, I just don't have his speed. But, yeah, no, he's not. Yeah. No. Short game's always there. That's never a doubt. It's just, you gotta hit you gotta hit like at least half your fairways just to you know not have to punch out half the day. <laughs> the guy. What a thrill, you know. <laughs> the the thrill, the baby. <laughs> That's how he got the name. Matt, could you uh could you let the listeners know uh where they can listen to our podcasts and you know where they can kind of catch up on on bogey proof content across all our different platforms? Of course, of course. Uh, as always, we got the Bogey Proof Tweets Twitter account. Um, a little more active this weekend. Got back in the mix with uh, the different LPGA and all the Tiger stuff going on. Um, Bogey Proof Graham, always active. We've been, been doing pretty good with that. We got our cocktails of the week coming out on there. Uh, some new stuff with, you know, some what's in the bag videos, whatever it may be. Um, Bogey Proof blog site, as always. And then we have our YouTube, Bogey Proof subscribe there all of our podcasts we put the video out on there 
and all anything that makes it on Instagram also gets put on the YouTube as well. So it's good, a good catch all um, to kind of watch all of our content through the video and then Twitch bogey proof. Um, that's active. We're working on it. We're getting there. We're trying to find more ways to get that in the mix, but um, don't be afraid to give us a follow there. So that way you can catch us when we start, you know, making a fool of ourselves on Twitch uh, podcast is always around Spotify, Apple music, Amazon, wherever else you find your podcast, we're out there. And again, trying to just give you guys a full experience, all the different venues, all the different social media apps, whatever we got out there. Um, we give it to you a little bit different in each way. So all of our stuff, it's, it's out there. Yeah. And, and like always guys, you know, we, we hope that we get continued interaction with our, with our listeners. You know, I think the majority of our, our people consuming our content are, are on podcasts or, or Instagram and, you know, feel feel free to dive into our our dms on instagram and ask us questions send us videos i know we got a few more swing videos that that are that our uh in-house pro joey's working on as far as giving some some new drills and a couple things to work on to improve on their golf swing and i think with us kind of all being in warmer weather starting that the end of this week we'll uh we'll be in a position to you know put up some some videos of our swings and and kind of go back and forth um and, and talk about that. And I, I think with, with Matt and Eric in Florida as well, we'll probably get a little bit of, of content, you know, golf course content as far as Instagram live and things like that too. So a little more action um, on, on all our different platforms here with just the capabilities of, of being in warmer weather and being around golf courses and, you know, a lot of cocktails flowing in March. There's something about warm weather that makes you want to sip a beer, make a cocktail um, and enjoy the sunshine. So Hopefully we'll have a, a couple of exciting ones here in, in the month of March for, for everyone as well. Let's uh, let's move on to the big PGA tour tournament this week. Arnold Palmer invitational at Bay Hill spectacular golf course. I think a golf course that the people that go every single year really enjoy um, difficult off the tee conditions are perfect. I, th- I think that's one thing that kind of always comes up as well as like, right? Like if there's no win, people tear it apart because the greens are perfect. The condition, like the bunkers are perfect. And, and really like the defense of it is some of these big water hazards and the people on the PGA tour, they fly at like 330 yards now. So I think at, at times they can take advantage and just fly water hazards and make par fives into par fours, um, you know, and make that 450 yard par four end up being a driver and a flip wedge. Um, but excited to watch Bay Hill like like we always do. Disappointing to not have kind of the horses for the the course here with Tiger Woods not playing this week and you know Matt Avery. Uh, I think Matt Avery's probably in the field, but I mean he's he's pretty much yeah, falling man, off. He, he's pretty much falling <laughs> off the face of the earth at this point. I would expect a a WD by the eighth hole if I had to guess um, this week. <laughs> he's 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 known for that. He's known for walking off the tenth tee just because. It's our after the ninth green, just because it's the, the quickest to the golf, uh, to the clubhouse and then just going to the parking lot and heading out. Um, so, you know, we're probably going to see that at some point this week, but yeah, you know, Eric, could you kind of give us a little fill us in on, on kind of what's going on in, on Bay Hill? You know, we've had some pretty good finishes and some kind of a unique set of champions, I would say, even if we kind of focus on the last 15 years. Yeah. So, um, they, like you said, last 15 years, um, I think the, the stat that kind of was circulating around today was there's only been two American winners in the last 15 years, Tiger Woods and, and Matt Every, like you mentioned. Um, so, yeah, it, it definitely produces some, some interesting winners, um, specifically Joey's boy. I think Sung, Sungjae won here last year. Honda. He won Honda. Honda. He won the Honda. Never mind. But, uh, yeah, so, so definitely some – some interesting winners kind of a little bit all over the place sometimes. And then also there's been with, with some of the Tigers wins, there's been some pretty historic finishes. Some of those putts that he's made on 18, I think he's seems like he's made the same putt to win it like two or three times kind of from the same spot, like 20, 25 feet with, with Arnold there watching over from on top of the little mound behind the 18th green. So it's a, it's, it's an awesome finish as far as the golf course goes and, like you said, Mike, it's, it's an awesome golf course to watch on TV. So it's, um, I, like we had talked about in our, uh, in the, in the pod a couple of weeks ago, something that we're most looking forward to 
at the in the golf season if if covid restrictions were to be lifted and then my answer was was this tournament was the start of it with with the florida swing and stuff like that and for me this is what gets the golf season going so i am i am definitely very excited to, for for this week and um being in orlando during this tournament is gonna gonna make it a little bit a little bit more exciting for sure yeah you guys you guys might have to stop by or you know maybe maybe you'll find yourself at a nice dinner and uh and a couple of players will walk in. I remember yeah. that. I, I think that's, that could be kind of fun. I, I remember not to cut you off, Eric, but I remember being in, in Hartford going out to, we went out to like a steakhouse or something like that. Um, when the travelers was going on and we saw Matt Kuchar and his, his wife were out to dinner, like at the table next for us. And it was the year, it was the year when he played in the Olympics. So it was kind of cool. We got to, say like, Hey, congrats. Good luck in the Olympics. And then he won the bronze medal like two weeks later. Yeah, um, cool. That was pretty cool, but yeah. So yeah, I think that that'll, that'll be a lot of fun. And, you know, I'm looking forward to, to watching some Bay Hill. Joey, have you ever uh, made it up to Bay Hill, our uh, Bay Hill before? Have you played the golf course? I have. I've played it once. Um, I played it last winter on my way down here. Um, yeah, you know, good golf course. I, I honestly, when I, you know, when I first and the only time I played it, yes, I liked it, but like I wasn't as blown away by it that I thought I was. And, you know, I think it was more so, you know, just because, you know, Florida golf, it's all so similar. And, you know, even though, yes, it is Bay Hill, like, you know, when I was out there playing it, you know, it was just, I just felt like I was on another golf, you know, just another Florida golf course. I didn't, I don't know. It was a little weird, but you know, I played alone um, and I didn't play well. So I think that, you know, that always kind of has a factor into it as well, but I, you know, I would love to go back and try to, you know, get another crack at it and see how I could do. And hopefully I'm hitting the ball a little bit better that day, but I mean, you know, even, even going back and just kind of thinking over the holes and not necessarily how I played them, but just, you know, as a layout, you know, you, you know, I start to kind of realize now how much, you know, how it is a really good golf course and how I may have just overlooked a few things just because of a bad experience on on my own. And, you know, I kind of probably put too much pressure on myself to play that course and, you know, and ended out, ended up putting a bad taste in my mouth. But like, I'll never forget, like that was the most, and I don't know why, but that was the most nervous I've ever been on a tee. It was just like, going into one of Arnie's places, you know, like just teeing off. Like it was the most nervous I've been on a tee. And like, I remember just even getting out to the fair where my hands were so shaking. It was nuts. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's like, why am I nervous? I'm out here just playing a golf course by myself. Like for no, oh my God. you know what I mean? So I, I, don't, I don't know why I was so nervous, but uh, yeah, hell of a course. Hopefully maybe I'll be able to try to play it on my way back up again and, you know, get a second taste at it. But Hopefully on Sunday. Um, I and luckily I think I got the day off, so maybe I'll try to go out and watch the tournament. I texted friend of the program, Jason Hattie, see if he may want to join because he's not too far either. So uh, maybe we'll make a little trip out of it, and maybe you boys can get some time away from golfing and go go watch. <laughs> have was, have you have you spoken to the PGA Tour about getting a credential? Uh, I'm pretty sure they they're allowing tickets, guys. It's Florida. I'm 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 saying like a a media pass a credential for I for bogey proof. proof. I could try. <laughs> Come on, let's go pull some strings. <laughs> send an, send an, send an email. Say that I'm you'll. Gonna, I'm gonna have to now. The, yeah. At least <laughs> see what hey. they can do. That'd just just let just let me know if you want me to. I I can send an email from the bogey proof email. What um, would be the odds they actually were to let? <laughs> yeah, let's not this Joe Schmo in, but. <laughs> I wouldn't even know what to do. I wouldn't even know where to go. I literally like um. I'm walking with a recorder and a notebook and be ready to take and be ready to talk to people. <laughs> I wouldn't know what to, I would just freeze up. I'd see him and I'd be like, "Hi." <laughs> I wouldn't. Freak out. Joe Zelensky, bogey proof. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no. Oh, I mean, hopefully, I'll be able to get up there and uh, go watch show. I mean, that would be a, that would be a great little, like uh like bogey proof sponsored interview. Like every player that, that shoots a bogey free round, just like this interview 
is brought to you by bogey proof matthew <laughs> fitzpatrick out there today with a bogey free 68 <laughs> We're gonna need them to lighten the load on these uh, these tournament schedules and get play play a few more uh, TPC River Highlands and shit so we get some more. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Let's. Uh, does anyone have kind of any anyone got any picks for this weekend? You know, I, I think we do picks every single week, but this is kind of a unique one, I think, because just with not having any American winners and, and no tiger in the field and no Avery, who's kind of had a lot of success here in the past. And um, we've seen some studs win recently, but we've also seen kind of, you know, people that are outside the top hundred, um, you know, win this tournament in the past. And it's kind of a wild field, Matt, who was, who, who'd you say was in this week? Was Tim Heron in the field this week? Yep. Yeah. He's, in, mm-hmm. he's, he's floating around. I think he's There's a past a, winner. I think he's a past winner. So, yeah, Paul Goidos in here. He won back in like 03, like around one of the Tiger wins. Like, just looking back the, at the past winners here, you're right. It's all, I mean, Tiger has eight. So he takes up a lot of that past winners <laughs> inventory. And then Avery's got a couple. Um, but it is, it is interesting. I mean, I think actually Payne Stewart has like the, the scoring record here. He's like 20 under. Uh, is like the lowest it's ever gone. Tiger got to 19 and won by 12 one year, but um, Payne's got the all-time low here, which is pretty cool, I thought. But yeah, the field is a little interesting for such a kind of marquee event, right? I mean, it's Bay Hill, it's it's Arnold Arnold's tournament, right? It's usually brings out the biggest names, but like you said, not a lot of American guys in here for whatever reason. Like Bryson's probably the highest ranked one in the field, I would think. Because um, I don't think more cows in here, Finau's not, DJ's not, so definitely a little bit interesting with the field this week but it'll always be a good tournament to watch with the golf course quality and kind of having that Arnold Palmer aspect to it so on that note um, I'm not going to pick an American because I'm not going to go against the odds here and with no Tiger or Avery in the field it's uh, it's been like 24 years so I'm going to go with uh, Fleetwood I think this week scares me as a pick but I just feel like I can't get last year's Honda tournament out of my brain. I just, I see Florida golf courses and I just see him playing well and striping the irons. And I think he rolls it really well when the greens are, you know, as pure as they're going to be. I mean, obviously everybody does, but I think that's something that uh, when he can have some confidence with the putter that flows to the rest of his game uh, quite a bit, unlike, you know, not everybody feels that way. Some people just putt pretty consistently no matter what but for him I think it feeds off the rest of his game really well so I'm gonna go with Fleetwood here I think he's due like I said tough driving course he's a pretty straight driver of the golf ball it's not like he pounds the ball so I think it uh I don't know I think he's due to kind of he's due to win on the PGA Tour I don't think he's got a PGA Tour win yet plenty over in Europe a lot of good finishes on the PGA Tour and whatnot but I think he's due to break out I think it happens this Florida swing hoping I get it right and it's this week but we'll see Joey who do you got this week ah uh... I'm I'm stuck between two, but I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I kind of want to stick with Jordan, but I'm not going to, I just, I don't feel it this week with Jordan. Um, I'm going to stick with my pick that your boys gave me last week. I'm, I'm sticking with Patrick Reed. You know, I, I, you know, from, he played pretty decently this past weekend from what I thought, I think I saw at least he just kind of fell yeah. apart. He, what did he have like a back nine forty one or something like that? Or, you know, so I mean, and yeah, overall, the- what's that? He was in the mix for sure. He, I think exactly. You know, I mean, he's been, he's been playing well over all these past few weeks anyway. And I, uh, I don't know. I just kind of liked him. I was between him and my boy, Sung Jay, obviously. So Sung Jay, <laughs> honorable mention, you heard it here first. So if either of those two win, I'm marking that as a W. <laughs> heard it here first. What about, uh, we gotta get the, we gotta get the phantom Sung Jay in the back of our face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's the no, if he's no, playing, no. We, he's we playing, have my honorable. Can can we get? We need to get a graphic with Sung Jay and Kiradak Afi Barnra on Joey's shoulders. I might just like yeah. need to get that and tattooed on <laughs> <laughs> the tattoo on your back of, of the rat with a big old tattoo of the rat. Oh my god! <laughs> my mother would kill me. But uh, yeah, no, those <laughs> those are my one one and a half picks. I guess you could say. Um. Mikey, who are you going with? Yeah, I'm I'm going with someone who's had a lot of success here um, at Bay Hill the last few years. Mark Leishman, second place last year to Terrell Hatton. 
surprise. We haven't had anyone pick uh, Tyrrell Hatton, maybe Eric will, um, but a guy that's had a lot of success and, and, you know, <laughs> won here last year. So I would expect him also to be near the top of the leaderboard. Um, but Mark Leishman, second place here last year, winner, I think in 2017. Um, don't quote me on that. Might have been some a year or two before or after that. But you got it right. 2017, you know, as someone who, who struggled a little bit, you know, maybe six months ago, but has found quite a bit of form, I would say, as of late. That driver off the deck he hit at concession last week just sealed <laughs> the deal that I was going to pick him. Um, <laughs> he's just a lot of fun to watch. I, I think him and his caddy have a good time. There's a lot of back and forth. I think the guys on tour really enjoy and he's also, he's a Florida, he's a Florida guy. I mean, he's from Australia originally, but he lives in Florida. He has his own beer um, that's produced by, by an Orlando brewery, I believe. So he just a guy that's kind of become long. part of the, the culture um, in Florida. And I would expect him to play well. And, you know, I think, I think this is the week he gets it done. I, I think also before Eric puts in his uh, pick here, I think it's interesting to note that, right. This was the last tournament that was played last year because players we played we played friday or we played thursday we played thursday and then it was done so this was the last you know this was kind of the Terrell hatton was a was the last champion on the pga tour for for a few months at one point um you know so it, it's kind of eerie i would say that we're coming up on a on a year of kind of living this sort of situation and and it's interesting right because you know matt and i working kind of in the the accounting world and the business you know professional services world we haven't been to an office in a year right Mm -hmm. eric and joey kind of in being in the service industry have been going to their clubs and and kind of living the new normal um but also kind of creating like you guys are just you guys are operating on a on a different wavelength than you were before but you're you know, you're in person, you're doing those kind of things. So it's just kind of eerie that this is coming up on a, on a year. And it's interesting how golf and kind of the golf season and kind of the swing. And Hey, what do you, what do you think about when you think about early March? Hey, think about Bay Hill. You know, you think about the players. So kind of the way that we kind of put different pins and in, in where they come up uh, throughout the year, but yeah, definitely kind of eerie that this is all coming up to a year and um, I, I think we'll talk kind of moving forward a little bit, probably next week about the players too, about what happened last year. But Eric, who do you got this week? I'm going, I'm, I'm kind of riding the, the international player wave. Uh, I'm going Christian Bezidin, who he, uh, tell, tell, <laughs> tell, tell us, tell us about him. What, what is he? He's South <laughs> African. That's all I know. Yeah. He, he's South African. Um, I believe he, I think he's a Grayson guy, like his, uh, his fellow South African, Eric Van Royen. Um, so so he's, he's well-dressed, uh, he's never won on the PGA tour. Um, but I think he's got like five European tour, five international victories. He he won twice in South Africa earlier this year Yeah, in a row. He's a, he's a good player. Doesn't play a whole lot in the States. Um, he's a full-time European tour member. Um, but played well here last year at the Arnold Palmer. I think he, he, he had a top 20 and played pretty solid last week at concession. So other than that, there's not a whole lot that was was driving that pick other than kind of just looking for an international player that might give me some good odds if I try to throw some actual money on him. So um, Christian Bazidin, who that's who I'm I, riding with this week. I, I like it. Three foreigners and Captain America um, are the are the picks from the bogey <laughs> are the picks from the bogey proof staff this week. Looking forward to a to a fun week at Arnold Palmer and and a great weekend, I would say of a great five, six day stretch of content for the bogey proof staff with uh, Eric and Matt in Florida, you know, Joey graced us with some beautiful pictures of uh, stream song all weekend. So that, that was nice to see. Definitely got me a little bit jealous and uh, nice. hopefully I can make a trip I out there. Had you boys there with me. It would have made it a lot more enjoyable, but uh, one, another time. One day. Yeah, no, definitely. We got to make our, we got to make a trip down there. That looked, looked awesome. Looked like a great combination of, um, just a, a fun golf course, but also some difficulty and some wide fairways, some difficult kind of bunkers and yeah. a lot going on. It's definitely tough to lose a ball there. It's possible, but it's, it's tough to, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I was talking to one of the guys that I was playing with and we were just kind of talking about all the courses that we've been to. And I was just kind of saying like, we were playing the red course and the red ones 
that's the course that I like the most there. And I think that's ranked the kind of best out of all of them. But, you know, just some of the layouts of the holes and like the big bunker range, like we're just, I asked him, I was like, doesn't it kind of like remind you of tobacco road in a way? And he said, yeah, I mean, yeah, they had their similarities and they're just like some crazy holes out there. And, you know, so like if you ever get out and play there, I mean, hopefully you'll see the similarities that I saw and I'm not just going crazy, but no, it, it was, it's <laughs> fun golf course, fun uh, 36 holes are just beat the crap out of me in that hot sun all day walking and carrying your own bag so it's a good experience and looking forward to getting back out there yeah looked awesome hopefully we can all get out there soon but yeah you with you know eric and matt going to florida and, and me being here and here in texas and then spending some time in north carolina after that i think we got a, a great stretch of of content and you know a matching schedule on the pga tour i i think this stretch from March through the masters here is, is as good as it gets. And then even after that, right with heritage and, and a couple other really awesome spots all the way, probably through the PGA at Kiowa, we got mm-hmm. a, we got a great two, three months ahead of us um, on the PGA tour. And hopefully we'll be matching the content on our end here at bogey proof, but boys, always a pleasure to see you. It's nice having a cocktail and chatting some golf with you guys. Cheers. Cheers guys.